Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Summary from 4-Minute Books. Written by Nicholas Gouquet and read by Craig Trailer. One Sentence Summary Thinking Fast and Slow shows you how two systems of your brain are constantly fighting over control of your behavior and actions and teaches you the many ways in which this leads to errors in memory, judgment and decisions and what you can do about it. Favorite quote from the author. Nothing in life is as important as you think it is while you are thinking about it. Say what you will, they don't hand out the Nobel Prize for economics like it's a slice of pizza. Ergo, when Daniel Kahneman does something, it's worth paying attention to. His 2011 book, Thinking Fast and Slow, deals with two systems in our brain, those fighting over who's in charge and making us prone to errors and false decisions. It shows you where you can and can't trust your gut feelings and how to act more mindfully and make better decisions. Here are three good lessons to learn what's going on up in your head. 1. Your behaviour is determined by two systems in your mind, one conscious and the other automatic. 2. Your brain is lazy and thus keeps you from using the full power of your intelligence. And 3. When you're making decisions about money, Leave your emotions at home. So, want to school your brain? Let's take a field trip through your mind. Lesson 1. Your behavior is determined by two systems in your mind, one conscious and the other automatic. Cayman labels these two systems in your mind as follows. System 1 is automatic and impulsive. It's the system you use when something sketchy enters the train and you instantly turn towards the door and what makes you eat the entire bag of chips in front of your TV when you just wanted to have a small bowl. System 1 is a remnant from our past, and it's crucial to our survival. Not having to think before jumping away from a car when it honks at you is quite useful, don't you think? System 2 is very conscious, aware and considerate. It helps you exert self-control and deliberately focus your attention. This system is at work when you're meeting a friend and trying to spot them out in a huge crowd of people, as it helps you recall how they look and filters out all these other people. System 2 is one of the most recent additions to our brain and is only a few thousand years old. It's what helps us succeed at today's world, where our priorities have shifted from getting food and shelter to earning money, supporting our family and making complex decisions. However, These two systems don't perfectly alternate or work together. They often fight over who's in charge, and thus conflict determines how to act and behave. Lesson 2. Your brain is lazy and causes you to make intellectual errors. Here's an easy trick to show you how this conflict of two systems affects you. It's called the bat and ball problem. A baseball bat and a ball cost $1.10. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? I'll give you a second. Have you got it? If your instant and initial answer is 10 cents, I'm sorry to tell you that System 1 has tricked you. Do the math again. Okay, once you spend a minute or two actually thinking about it, you'll see that the ball must cost 5 cents. Then, if the bat costs $1 more, it comes out that $1.05, which combined gives you $1.10. Fascinating, right? What happened here? When System 1 faces a tough problem it can't solve, it calls System 2 into action to work out the details. But sometimes your brain perceives problems as simpler as they actually are. System 1 thinks it can handle it, even though it actually can't and you end up making a mistake. Why does your brain do this? Just as with habits, it wants to save energy. The law of least effort states that your brain uses a minimum amount of energy for each task it can get away with. So, when it seems System 1 can handle things, it won't activate System 2. In this case, though, it leads you to not use all of your IQ points, even though you actually need to. So our brain limits our intellect by being lazy. Lesson 3. When you're making decisions about money, leave your emotions at home. 
Even though Milton Friedman's research about economics built the foundations of today's work in the field, eventually we came to the grips with the fact that Homo economicus, the man or woman who only acts based on rational thinking, first introduced by John Stuart Mill, doesn't quite resemble us. Imagine these two scenarios. Scenario one, you're given $1,000. Then you have the choice between receiving another fixed $500 or taking a 50% gamble to win another $1,000. Scenario two, you're given $2,000. Then you have the chance between losing $500 fixed or taking a gamble with a 50% chance of losing another $1,000. Which choice would you make for each one? If you're like most people, you would rather take the safe $500 in scenario one, but the gamble in scenario two. But the odds of ending up with $1,000, $1,500 or $2,000 are the exact same in both. The reason has to do with loss aversion. We're a lot more afraid of losing what we already have as we are keen on getting more. We also perceive value based on the reference points. Starting at $2,000 makes you think you're in a better starting position, which you want to protect. Lastly, we get less sensitive about money which is called the diminishing sensitivity principle, the more we have. The loss of $500 when you have $2,000 seems smaller than the gain of $500 when you only have $1,000. So you're more likely to take a chance. Be aware of these things. Just knowing your emotions try to confuse you when it's time to talk money will help you make better decisions. Try to consider statistics, probability, and when the odds are in your favor, act accordingly. Don't let emotions get in the way when they have no business. After all, rule number one for any good poker player is to leave your emotions at home. Hey, this is Nick, the founder of 4-Minute Books, and I want to thank you so much for watching our video. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel for more. You can also visit us at 4minutebooks.com for hundreds of free book summaries, each of which will make you smarter in 4 minutes or less. Thanks again and always keep learning.